Well, hello, boys and girls. This Pete and, and myself decided to come back and talk to you a little bit more about the gospel. Ooh, this should be fun. It is going to be fun, Pete. Do you remember what I was talking to you about what the name of this gospel story is called? Mm, Road to Jupiter? Not Road to Jupiter, Pete. Road to, uh... Road to, uh, do you need some help? No, let me think. Do you guys know? Do you know what the name of the story is? If I said road to, what would you think? Emmaus. Oh, that's right, Pete. Road to Emmaus. And in this gospel story, we're still in the Easter season. Oh, I love Easter. What do we hear about during the Easter season, Pete? What have we been... What have we been learning mm, about the risen Jesus? That's right. So we learned during Lent, during Holy Week, and um, on Easter about how Jesus died for us and then how he um, rose from the dead. And now we are hearing stories about how he came after he rose from the dead and talked to people that he loved and cared about. Oh, yes. It's very exciting. You're right. You're right. And today is a really neat story because it has a stranger and it talks about all of the ways that Jesus is present to us. So that's really something fun to think about. Oh, yeah, I like to think about those things. Pete, what is a way that you think Jesus is present to you? Hmm. And my friends? Yeah, yeah. In your friends and family? Absolutely. Especially when they're kind and do loving things? Absolutely. All right, Pete. I'm going to tell a story, and I'm going to use some finger puppets. So I'm going to have Pete go and sit down so he can listen to the story, because I know that he loves to hear the stories. Oh, yes. I love the stories. Thank you, Pete. Maybe I'll call on you later. Say bye. Bye. All right, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer. So this is a drawing that's gonna to have to do with our story today. And this is a picture of a town called Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was the place that Jesus um, was crucified. And he died and was buried and he rose again. And about seven miles away from Jerusalem was a town called Emmaus. So that's over here. And we're gonna pretend like this road is seven miles long. We're also gonna pretend that it's still like the same day or maybe very soon after Jesus had died and, and risen um, from the grave. So put yourself back into those spots. All right, so on this day, uh, it was Easter evening, and two people were on their journey back to Emmaus. And they were very sad. You see, they were friends and believers and disciples of Jesus. And they were so sad because Jesus had just died. And they had heard that he had risen, but that was really hard for them to believe. Well, they were walking. Sad. <sighs> Along can't come a stranger. The stranger comes up to them and he says, Why are you so sad? And they say, Haven't you heard? Jesus, our friend Jesus, who was a wonderful man, was crucified for no reason. And died. Now they said that he rose. And we just were really hopeful because we knew that he was love and he taught people how God wanted them to act and how to love others the best way. And we thought he was going to come and save the world and be our leader. And then they they killed him on the cross. It was sad. We just don't know what to do next. And they were puzzled. 
Well, the stranger walked along with them and he said, hmm, yeah, I, I have heard. And they're walking. And the stranger started talking about Jesus. And he started talking about the stories from scripture, which is what we know as the Old Testament. But for them, it was, it was their teachings that they had learned. And he talked about how it said that Jesus knew and he had to come and suffer so that he could save us. And he talked to them about what the, what the scriptures were, had said and what the readings were saying. And they started to feel a lot better and they started to kind of better understand what was happening and what was going on. And the stranger was teaching them all about the word, the word of God. And as they got, they, they accompany, he accompanied them down the road and they were feeling a lot better and their, their hearts were feeling lighter. And, and he said, okay, well, the stranger said, okay, well, I guess it's time for me to go. And the two friends said, no, 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 come, come eat dinner with us. And they invited this stranger to have a meal with him. And the stranger said, okay, yeah, I'd love to. And so they went into, into their house. And they made a very nice meal. And the stranger took the bread and he prayed to God. He blessed it and he broke it. And as soon as he broke it, Jesus appeared. And then he disappeared. And the friends were like, oh, can you believe it? That was Jesus. Jesus was here with us. We, we broke bread with Jesus. And so they ran back to Jerusalem, the whole seven miles. And they said, we saw him. He came to us. We saw the risen, risen Christ. We saw, we saw Jesus. They were so excited. Jesus wanted them to know that he didn't leave them. He was still there for them. He was there for them in the meals that they shared. He was with them as a community together. He was with them in the stories that he told along the, along the, the road to Emmaus. He was with them in the community. See, Jesus died and he came back so that he could be with all of us, right? So that we could be with him forever. Even when we die, we get to go live with him in heaven, which is really amazing. All right. Isn't that such a cool story? So what that reminds me of, so I'm looking at this picture, and I see this, this stranger who we know now is, is who? who? Who did this stranger end up being? It was Jesus. That's right. So we know that this is Jesus, and we see the bread that he's breaking, and we see the people gathered, and they're, the wine that they're drinking, hmm, and they're at a table with a tablecloth. This reminds me of something, something that I've seen before. What do you think? What, is this, what does this maybe remind you of? Hmm. Well. It reminds me of Mass when we meet at the church. And even when we get to meet on the computer virtually, because we still see Father Jim or Father Steve Kluge or Father Steve Patty celebrate Mass for us. And do you know what? There are very similar things in here. Let's see here. Well, down here we have the host right? Which is like the bread. We have a table. There's also a table up here. We have the wine. Remember, that's the blood. So the body and blood. Right here, we have a woman reading the Bible, the word, the scriptures. Jesus is present in the scriptures. Ooh, do you know what kind of candle this is? I don't know if we've talked about it. This is a very special candle. And at our church, it's really, 
big and wide and it's white and it has the date on it. And it's called the Paschal Candle or the Easter Candle. And what that does, it reminds us that one, Jesus is the light. And it also reminds us about Easter and about the Easter mystery of Jesus dying for us and then rising for us, right? Hmm. All right, so we have the, the readings. Well, up here, we have Jesus on the cross. That's a reminder, right, that Jesus is present and what happened. We have one of those in our church. And, ooh, what about this guy? Who is this guy? Can you tell? Hmm. Doesn't really look like Father Jim or Father Steve Kluge or Father Steve Patty, but it is a priest. And there are priests in all of the Catholic churches. And they all look different, but they all do the same thing. And they, they all act for us in the person of Jesus, which means, remember when they're standing at the altar and they have the body and the bread and they bless it and they break it and they share it with all of us for communion? That's so amazing. And so that's, so this is, so the priest is kind of reminds us of Jesus also, right? And of course we have flowers and things that are beautiful to remind us of all of God's creations that they're all around us. Another fun thing that I see are all these families. There's a little baby here on the shoulder and this little boy dropped his teddy bear. And we're in, when we're in mass or when we're at play and pray, we get to be there with all of our friends and all of our community, right? And Jesus is present with us when we're there. Well, when we're in home, when we're at home, do you know what? All of the people that are watching mass with us, that are praying, that are singing, that are breaking bread with us, they're present. That's Jesus present to us. And, and they're still there. We still see him. Even though we can't be physically next to them, we can't touch them. And the same with the body and blood. When we're in church at mass, Jesus is present in the body and blood. And he still is when, they, when we have to go to mass virtually. We just don't receive it the same way that we do when we're at church. So I thought that was a really neat and special, special story for us to talk about today. And it's going to be the gospel reading for this Sunday. So you can talk to your parents about the road to Emmaus right? And maybe think about your own road. What roads do you take where Jesus is present with you and you might not even know? How cool was that? His friends, the disciples that were walking to Emmaus, didn't recognize that it was Jesus. It didn't look necessarily like Jesus. But Jesus walked with them and accompanied them and he gave them the opportunity to say, all right, guys, peace out. But, but they didn't. They welcomed Jesus into their heart and into their home, which is kind of like what we, what we do when we pray and when we look all around us at the things that Jesus is in. So let's, let's say a prayer today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Walk with me, Jesus. Today and every day, I want to walk with you, Jesus, every day of my life. This week, I challenge you guys to, to look around and to think about where have you seen Jesus in your life? Where is he right now? Where is, was he when we were going to Mass? Maybe he is in things that you never thought about. He's in the things that people are doing when they're kind and when they're showing love. He's in you and me. And he's always with us, walking alongside of us. And all we have to do is believe in him and to pray and to talk to him and to show him that we want his love. And he's ready to give it to us. He's ready to love us. All right, boys and girls, I will see you guys next week on another video. And I hope that you're having a wonderful time and that you're enjoying these as much as I am. Okay, bye, love you.